how did you refactor that? After my last video about primitive obsession, one of the viewers asked this on Twitter. He wrote something like, I don't only want to see the end result, I want to see how you arrived there. So, which steps did I take to refactor the code and which transformations did I do to the code? So, in today's video, I want to show you how I would refactor a small piece of code like the one from the last video. My name is Dave, and I'm a trainer and technically agile coach with over 12 years of experience. And I'm doing these videos to show you things that you can try to become a better software developer. In today's video, I want to show you how I would refactor some code like the one from the last video to get rid of the overuse of primitive data types there. So the last video was about primitive obsession, about how code can be bad if it overuses primitive data types. I don't want to talk again today about why this is a problem. The last video was about it, and I have added a link to this video in the description. So today I only want to get rid of those primitive data types, and I want to show you how I did it. So let's look at the original code again. By the way, if you like this video, please subscribe to this channel and share the video with your friends and followers. That would be really awesome. So the code I want to refactor is from a controller that is part of an app that allows their users to pay their taxes. So basically this function gets a tax account number, which is some information about the person who wants to pay taxes, and it validates it, extracts an ID from it, the tax office ID, loads some information about this tax office from the database, and then shows some information about the tax office. So for example, when the first two digits of the tax account number, which is the tax office ID, when those two digits are 46, then the application would display that the tax office is Linz and it would also display the IBAN of the tax office in Linz. I have also added some code, like I have added a view that is mostly empty for now, but it shows how a real view would use this contr controller. So we can register on changed listeners to the view and the view would call all these listeners when something changes. For example, the text field for entering tax account numbers. And the controller implements this interface. So whenever the tax account number changes, my on, change, on tax account number changed method will be called. And this is exactly the method I want to refactor. I have also added some more code. I have added a constructor with the dependencies to the controller and I have also added some more validation. For example, when the tax office is not found, the code now outputs an error message and does not try to access some values from it. I needed this extra code to write some tests and I needed those tests for refactoring. Because remember, refactoring means changing the code without changing functionality. And you can only do this when you're pretty sure that you didn't change anything. So refactoring means applying small, safe steps or transformations to the code and then also validate or verify each of these steps. So after every step, we must check that we didn't change any functionality. And yes, I know I do not, I cannot ever have proof that I didn't change anything or I can never be 100% sure. But when I work in small safe steps and when I use the compiler and my tests to verify each steps, then I can be pretty sure. I would even argue that when you do not do that, when you do not work in small steps and verify every steps, 
what you're doing is not refactoring. It's just some changes to the code and you hope you didn't change anything about the functionality. So, um, I needed the tests to do the refactoring because otherwise I couldn't refactor, I would just change the code. But how I wrote these tests is not very important right now. That's maybe a topic for a later video. So it's small safe steps and I want to get rid of all the primitives. And as a first step, I want an object for the tax account number. So I create this class and I give the new variable a very ugly name now um, as a reminder that I'm not done here, that I want to come back here and refactor even further. But first I have to do some implementation in this new class, in the tax account number class. So I need a field for the constructor parameter and I probably want something like a getter for that. And to create these, I try to use the shortcuts of my IDE a lot. In this case, I will press Alt Enter to generate the field and the getter. And later I will use sometimes Control Alt Shift T to open the refactor this menu of my IDE. I'm pretty sure other IDEs have similar functionality. So I create a field. I created a field um, for the um, parameter and a getter, but I renamed the getter to S string because this is the string representation of the tax account number and probably a sanitized string representation. I did not use the name to string here because to string is supposed to be human readable to be used during logging, but not to be used by other code. So I replace all the uses of the old string parameter with the new class, but using the S string method to convert back to a string and my tests still pass. Now I can rename the parameter and the text account number object or a variable to, to names that better reflect what they represent. And this means that now the parameter gets the ugly name because it is the uglier value of the two. So I now want to move all the validation of text account numbers to a factory method on the text account number class because it should never be possible to create an invalid tax account number object. That means the validation must go there and I want to do that in small safe steps again. So I first extract the factory method, then I make it static and then I can move it to the tax account number class all using built-in IDE functionality that is probably safer than when I would type all these things out. So I want to move the validation code here, but I first introduce a second variable for the sanitized input because this factory method should later also sanitize the input before even trying to validate it. And now when I move the validation code into this factory method, I also have to somehow pass the validation error back to the caller. And I want to do it in this case with an exception. There are other options, but an exception seems reasonable here. So I first duplicate the validation code at the exception, and then I can move it. Later, I could even inline the validation code from this util class. And if it was the last method on the util class, I could remove the util class. But that would require some more changes that are probably off topic for this video. So I won't do it now, but I will remember for later that this is something that I could improve even more. But I want to go back to the method on tax account number changed and I want to get rid of the primitive tax office ID. So I basically apply the same steps as before. I create a new class for this ID. I extract the factory method and move it to the class. And then I have an object for the ID. 
And I also extract the second method for getting this ID. And I move this method to the tax account number type. So now the controller does not have to deal anymore with how to get the tax office ID from the tax account number. This is encapsulated in the tax account number type where it's a much better fit to the rest of the functionality. So um, I now can use the new class in the repository, but I also have to change some, some tests because the tests also pass a string here. But after changing the tests, all the tests are green again and everything is working again. Now, as a last refactoring for this video, I also want to get rid of the primitive data types of the tax office name and the international bank account number. So, again, I introduce some types here and then I can change the show methods. I can rename them to use the new types and now the name does not reflect the type of the variable anymore. So I can simplify the names here. But again, I have to change some tests because the tests would pass in strings here again. And after these changes, I can move some types around to make the code even nicer. So I can move these two new types, the name and the international bank account number to the tax office class, make inner classes from them and then rename them. Now the names are nicer and I can clean up the code even a little bit further. And now look at that new code in the controller. It is nicer and it has more compile time safety. In future refactorings, the compiler can help me even more do the right thing. Um, so for this video, I'm done here with the refactoring, but in reality, I'm not done at all. If you look at these new types for the value objects, the types that wrap a single value, they all share some similarity. All of them wrap a single value. All of them have a hash code method and an equals mesh method. and I could probably unify and simplify things here. And I already mentioned before, I should also work on inlining the validation code of tax account numbers and then get rid of the, this util class. So what about you? What do you think of these refactorings that I did right now and how I did them? What would you have done differently? How would you approach such a problem? Please tell me in the comments of this video or shoot me a tweet. I am dTancer on Twitter. And if you liked this video, please subscribe and share it with your friends and followers. That would be really awesome.